Hello friends, in this video demonstration, we are going to see how we can install Hyper-V Server 2012 R2 in Vimwick Workstation 12. Before you get too far along, be sure that you check the Hyper-V system recommend to install the Hyper-V Server 2012 R2 in Vimwick Workstation. Hyper-V Server has a hardware requirement that are similar to those for the Hyper-V role in other edition of Windows Server 2012 R2. 1.4 GHz 64-bit processor with a hardware assisted virtualization like Intel VT or MDV. Hardware and first data execution prevention bit means DAP must be available and enabled in your BIOS. I require minimum 512 MB RAM to install Hyper-V Server 2012 R2. I recommended 4 GB RAM to test the Hyper-V functionality properly in your lab environment. Required at least one network adapter by two or more are recommended. So the first step is to download the Hyper-V Server 2012 R2 ISO image which you can download from Technet Evolution Center. Once you have downloaded the ISO image of Hyper-V Server 2012 R2, you can start the installation on your live system or you can use virtualized platform to test the functionality of Hyper-V Server 2012 R2. So in this demonstration, I am using VMware Workstation 12 and inside that we are going to install the Hyper-V Server 2012 R2 just for testing purpose. So already I created one VM with the name Hyper-V 2012 R2. I specified 4 GB RAM and already I mounted the ISO image of Hyper-V Server 2012 R2. So let's power on this virtual machine. So this is the first screen where we can select your language, keyboard and uh, numerical format like language to install, it's so you English, United States, time and currency and keyboard or input method. I will do it to default and then click on next. After the localization is selected, the Hyper-V Server installation wizard will start the installation in the selected configuration. Click on install now button to start this specific part of the installation process. Now the first part of the installation process is to accept the license agreement for Hyper-V Server 2012 R2. So let's select I accept the license terms and then hit on next. In the next console, it will ask you which type of installation do you want. First option is there for updations. Install the newer version of Hyper-V Server and keep file settings and application. And the second one is custom install the newer version of Hyper-V Server only. That is a clean installation of Hyper-V Server 2012 R2. So for this demonstration, we are going for the custom installation. Select custom and hit on next. Now it is asking for specific partition where you want to install the Hyper-V Server. We have a 100 GB virtual hard drive and on that hard drive we are going to install the other Hyper-V server. So let's create a new partition. Click on apply. Click on ok. This will also create a one system resource partition of 350 MB. And we have another partition of 99.7 GB where we are planning to install Hyper-V server 2002 R2. Select the partition and then click on next. So as the installation proceeds, the computer will restart several times. When your installation is complete, you will have the opportunity to set up the administrator account and his password. This is local computer's administrator user. You can still join a Hyper-V host to an Active Directory domain, but this credential will be used for the local system user called administrator. So let's specify the password and hit on enter. So password has been changed, click on OK. Once the password is selected, the Hyper-V Server 2012 R2 is ready to go. The first screen you will see is the console of Hyper-V host and there is a special script as config runs for the base administration task like a setup of computer name, reboot, networking as well as the command prompt. So let's go for the initial configuration of Hyper-V Server 2012 R2. Like this is the first, we have a domain and workgroup. In this demonstration, I'm not going to join this computer to our domain environment. In a future videos, we will see the Hyper-V remote management, but this time we want to use this computer as a workgroup. Here we can set up a computer name, but before set up a computer name, I want to go for the specifying the network settings. So for if you want to go for the networking settings, you have to type 8. So enter the number and hit an enter key. It will ask for network settings. Like we have a uh, index number 11. The current IP address is 192.168.19.137. Select the network adapter index. It's 11. Hit an enter. If you want to set up a network adapter address, that time you have to type 1. Hit enter. Select DHCP. D for DHCP. As for static IP, so let's specify S and hit enter. Now enter the static IP, so let's specify 192.168.49.11, hit enter, enter the submit mask, default it's a 255.255.255.0, hit enter, enter the gateway, it will be 192.168.49.1, and that's it. 
The IP address is now we have a static IP 192.168.49.11. Next, let's set the DNS server's address. So to set the DNS servers, type 2 and hit enter. Enter new preferred DNS server. The specific DNS address is 49.5. In my case, preferred DNS server is set. Now, if you want to specify the alternate DNS server or blank for none, hit enter. Now we have a preferred DNS server S192.168.49.5. And let's return to main menu. So type 4 and hit enter. Now we just set IP address on our Hyper-V server. Now let's go for the remote desktop management. So we have a remote desktop. This is by default, it's disabled. So let's enable the remote desktop. E for enable and enter. Allow only client running remote desktop with network level authentication. So we have to that time we have to type one enter. Okay, so remote desktop enable for clients only running remote desktop with network level authentication. More secure. Click on OK. Now let's enable the remote management and that is by default enabled. If you want to configure the remote management settings, you can go for the options number four. And here we have enable remote management. And that is by default, it's enable. Return to main menu. And then last thing which uh, I want to set up is the computer name. So you have to type a 2 and hit enter. Now enter a new computer name, blank to cancel. Let's specify Hyper-V01. Hit enter. You must restart your computer to apply these changes. Restart now. Click on yes. Let's again log in as a administrator. So after restart, as you are seeing, the computer name is a Hyper-V01 and uh, on our computer, we already enabled the remote management and that's as you are seeing, it's enabled. So the next step with the Hyper-V Server 2000 R2 is to connect remotely via Hyper-V Manager and start running virtual machine if all of your environment prerequisites are complete. So in the next video, we will see how we can manage your Hyper-V Server 2000 R2 by using Hyper-V Manager on Windows Server 2000 R2 with GUI interface. So that's it for this video demonstrations. Thanks for watching this video.